Michael Enos here from TechSoup and I am uh, Ratnavel from Aspire Systems. So, uh, to set a little context before this session, like uh, why we are like two people from two different companies is like TechSoup partnered with Aspire Systems to uh, migrate their existing uh, middleware platform into a, a different platform for that matter, like they were open for uh, suggestion. So, we did some uh, groundwork and then suggested them the app platform. Uh, that is the reason like uh, here like we are going to share our experience in the journey of migration and uh, like Michael will uh, share his views and experience in terms of business, how, how it helped the business and I will be uh, sharing my experience and technical standpoint. Great, thank you Rana. Just a, a little bit about TechSoup as an introduction. Um, TechSoup could be described sort of as a um, facilitator aggregator of uh, digital, digital philanthropy worldwide. We are the largest um, uh, sort of facilitator of moving donated technology products, services, hardware and software to charities and civil society worldwide. We're, we uh, started in 1987 here in San Francisco as Compumenter, uh, basically taking uh, floppy disks that were left over and, and, and weren't used and, and taking them to charities in San Francisco. We've grown now to be in um, every country in the world except for the embargoed states. Um, and we work with the largest technology firms um, such as Google, Microsoft, Adobe, Slack, Box, uh, Symantec, um, any, any technology firm, Cisco, that wants to be philanthropic, um, almost every one of them moves their products uh, through us. Um, so we are the experts in curating nonprofit and non-governmental organizational data worldwide. So to that extent, our impact since we've been, since, we, since we've started, is essentially we have over, a, as you can see, we have over a quarter million um, members worldwide. We, um, we have over 100 plus of corporate um, and foundation partners. We've, our, our, our sort of total amount of impact from a monetary perspective is over $7.6 billion. Um, we have <clears throat> 7.4 million visitors on our websites. You can see these statistics. Basically, our impact is, is, is global. And so how do, we, how do we do this? We do this through a variety of platforms. Um, and so these platforms provide different services to the sector. Um, so what we call it just in general the civil society sector. Um, TechSoup.org uh, TechSoup is our US uh, donation um, platform. Uh, we have other, we have data services. We provide validation services for very large corporations such as Microsoft and Google. So if, if they want to um, validate a charity, um, they use our data services. Um, we have other types of services where we, we sponsor hackathons. We develop apps for good using Caravan Studios. Um, and we also have directory services for uh, charities worldwide. So um, as you saw in the last presentation, over the years we've developed as an organization, as an enterprise, basically um, what could be kind of considered as a stove, pro a stove pipe uh, situation where we have multiple platforms uh, you know, multiple websites, multiple technologies, um, and also some, uh, some legacy systems. So to that, I'll talk a little bit more about our business problem in, in, in a moment that we're trying to solve, but Rodney will go on and talk about Aspire a little bit. To give you a background about what Aspire is, is like as Nirosh was saying, like we are one of the uh, uh, preferred partners for WSO2, and apart from that, uh, we are also a services and technology company Uh, we are also a services and technology company with about like 200 people uh, across the globe and uh, we have been like awarded a great place to work for the seven consecutive times and we have uh, six global locations and we also offer services for uh, product engineering, uh, other things like enterprise solutions and independent testing and uh, other, other areas as well. And we also have like 150 plus uh, successful and happy customers. So this is going to be the agenda for today, like what we are going to do is like uh, we are going to uh, give you a little introduction about like why we have to migrate at all and then like, uh, like what we needed as a uh, scope for our project and like what are the challenges we face and our journey in the integration process. 
So, this is one good question like why migrate at all like uh, no answer is the wrong answer like uh, everybody has their own uh, version of the answer. So, for this question like no answer is a, a wrong answer uh, because for some it may be uh, business continuity and for some it is the uh, business scalability where they wanted to go and uh, adhere to a new architecture and other solutions. And uh, for some people uh, they say it is money. But still uh, there are like different answers uh, in terms of money as well. Uh, for some people like uh, it is not the reason, it is not the primary reason to migrate and for some like it is the reason and uh, for the others like it is uh, one of the few other reasons they wanted to migrate. And uh, the others it is like uh, the support they were getting it from the current platform. So, uh, like mostly like people uh, who wanted to migrate fall under one of these criteria. So, for this question like why migrate at all, uh, no answer is the wrong answer, but the right answer would be the time was right. Now, it is now that I decided to move on. So, that would be the right answer for this. And this is the uh, business problem like uh, we were trying to address and. Uh, yeah, I want to talk just a bit about the uh, business problems we were trying to solve. Um, uh, TechSoup is in uh, sort of a transformation stage, tr wanting to move, um, as a lot of organizations are, to cloud-based um, uh, service-oriented architecture. And um, we, um, and essentially, we, we, and we also want to align our tech, I mean, to this end, what we're really trying to do is align our technical strategy with our business strategy. Our business strategy is that we want to be able to, you know, as many businesses do, we want to be able to bring products and services to market faster if in, our, in our tech for good marketplace. We want to reduce technical debts, risks, and we want to improve performance, scalability, and sustainability. Um, the driver of, of, of all this is essentially a shift in our technology stru uh, strategy to cloud infrastructure, um, service-oriented, and, and DevOps models. Um, and essentially, the so one, one of the largest problems we were facing was that our legacy middleware solution was not meeting this business tech strategy. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't viable to think of it as a, you know, moving it to the cloud. Um, it wasn't, it, you know, we couldn't, it wasn't modular. Um, and it was, you know, as many organizations, we developed over time um, sort of a monolithic on-premise uh, combination of systems with lots of interdependencies. And as we're trying to think about transformation, you know, one of the goals was to start to decouple essentially some of these monolithic um, systems so that we could then um, have them be service oriented and move them to, to, to a service oriented approach and then move them to cloud based infrastructure or to cloud based services. So essentially, um, and, it, it, and the, the goal of that essentially was to you know, if, if we were able to be more agile, be able to develop faster, we can bring marks faster and we can meet business needs. Currently, um, right now, it's, 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 you know, some of the processes, the business processes that we have to do things like, like bring products into our marketplace is, um, is, ex is, is extensive, costly, and, um, and not, meeting the, not, not meeting our business goals, essentially. So, uh, like to address all those business needs, like uh, what we needed, we also like uh, know like what they have. So, like these are something like we needed to address as uh, the solution uh, us all together. So, we wanted to leverage the existing systems. Like we had a system for every functionality. So, we had like one system for sales, one system for managing orders, and we had like multiple other system. And this is the uh, solution to migrate the middleware platform and not like migrate the entire system and consolidate the other systems. So, we wanted to leverage the functionalities and uh, other features that were uh, right now provided by the other existing systems. That is number one. And we also wanted to consolidate all the web services they had. Uh, there were instances where they had like more than one version of a service in existence which is pretty normal, but like there were versions only for one customer. So, like they had like about six versions uh, at in place uh, for a single service at any point in time. So, that was one of the other uh, things we wanted to uh, come out of. Like we wanted to consolidate everything and make it like one URL for any user and we wanted to uh, use the technology there to decide like who to use which version and better versioning strategy I would put it in the other way. That is one of the things. And we wanted to retire some of the unused services we had. 
And uh, since by consolidating, we also thought of doing some house cleaning there. And we also wanted to implement content based routing. So, like how with one URL, like we'll be able to uh, route like different calls from different partners. To give you a little overview, like we had about like 70 consumers. Mm -hmm. And uh, like each consumer is identified using a auth key, a unique token for them. And we had to implement, uh, Im uh, implement content based routing using a service usage agreement where we are able to route based on the auth key, we identify who the client is, and then uh, we'll route them to the appropriate version of the service they wanted to use. Uh, that is one of the things like we have implemented as part of this. And uh, we also implemented a better versioning strategy because uh, with having multiple services and then it was getting complex. The, the proper versioning was not practiced before. So we wanted to emphasize on that. So that was something like we did as part of this project. And uh, the other thing was uh, quick time to market. Like we wanted to get value for the time and effort we have put in like quick as possible. That is one of the things. And we were also under a tight We deadline. had a hard stop on this. <laughs> yeah, we have to uh, like, uh, we have a hard deadline. Like we, had a hard we have deadline. to uh, re retire our service like in the next three months. We have like 90 days to do uh, end to end and then take things off. Uh, we have to just pull the plug on there. And then it's the fast time to value. So this is all about the business solution and the business problem we had. So now we are going to talk about our journey, like how we did and like what we did to achieve all these. Uh, our journey like uh, for any migration project to be a successful one, I would say like uh, there has to be a three key factors to be considered. Uh, one is what is the technology we are dealing with? Like it, it is not just the platform we are going towards. We also need to know from where we are migrating. So if one could identify and understand the tool like he is playing with, like both the source tool and the uh, target tool, it is easier in the process of migration. Because there, there were, uh, because those are two different tools from two different vendors. So it's going to be a comparison between Apple and oranges. The, the same thing is not going to be like across two tools. There are going to be certain uh, differentiations between the two tools. Though the features can be same, but there is definitely a simple uh, change. So understanding those uh, will help in uh, like addressing all this uh, migration. That is number factor one. And factor two is the process we have to do. So it is a, a tedious process, I would say, like so because uh, these are some old, uh, okay. Some of you have uh, come across these statements like being a developer or being a program manager or a product manager. Okay, that service was did by uh, another developer. He is no longer in the company. I don't know like what's happening there. Okay, so I don't have any documentation on that and some, there is like one customer using it. So I don't want to disturb the momentum. I want to retain that service until he is using it. So we might have come across all these things. So uh, we have to do uh, enough analysis of who's working and uh, like who's the current con consumer of the service and like how it is used, all those details. So doing a thorough study of the existing <coughs> landscape is a second key factor for any migration project to be a successful one. And the third thing is choosing the right technology or the tool. Because we already use a middleware platform. We wanted to go out of it and then take a new one. So we might have uh, failed with a new tool or we might be having some drawbacks with a new tool. There are some reasons to move out of the current tool. So we have to be careful and cautious in choosing the next one we are going for. We're gonna put some effort in there to build a platform and then I don't want that to fail in the next few months and then I have to go back again. So choosing a, route to, a right tool again is another uh, key factor to be considered in any migration project. With that said, like this is our landscape. So we started with this, like we were using Oracle Service Bus version 10 as our uh, base platform. And we also had a SQL server. And uh, the project timeline, like that was uh, like, uh, we, had, we had a hard stop. Like we have to go live by third month. By live in the sense, we also have to be, have all the 70 consumers like rolled out overnight. And then like they are spread across the globe. So we have to uh, communicate and then like, uh, we have to coordinate with all of them and then have, have them like switch the URL and that has to be tested and then we don't want to, someone like come back and say, okay, your service is not working from day one we switched. So we need to have some cushion there. So those were some aspects we have to consider. And then uh, the scope was like, uh, uh, we were a little lucky there. We only had like 27 services to migrate at that point in time. 
but still that was a great challenge uh, with what we had. And uh, the acceptance criteria, that was another uh, thing as I was saying. So we had uh, different consumers, like uh, we had uh, .NET, we had uh, PHP, and we had like three different versions starting from 5.5 to other ones. Uh, okay, one might ask, okay, it's a web service, it's a SOAP service. Why do you even care like what technology they use? Uh, but still, like, they were using a, a older technology, the transportation, HTTP versions played a huge role. Some of the consumer wanted uh, the thing to be chunked, and uh, the other ones, like they don't want to be chunked. So those were little uh, considerations you have to do, even if it's a SOAP or REST, uh, the technology and the version plays a role there. Next is our migration strategy. So we have taken like a four step approach here to uh, have this project. The first step was like we have done a discovery phase. Uh, discovery phase spanned for about four weeks. Uh, like uh, during those four weeks, uh, we did a thorough interview. Uh, we just spoke to all the business owners and the technical uh, developers and like whoever uses or handles the particular service. We, ha we had to conduct like multiple interviews uh, collect any documents that might have they have and all those groundwork were done during the discovery phase. So that laid us a, a great uh, platform to proceed further and to identify uh, most of the uh, drawbacks or the pitfalls like we could uh, come across in the uh, execution phase. And then uh, is the design phase. Uh, during discovery phase we have found out like okay now almost like uh, most of the services were not having a documentation and we had to go back and do the reverse engineering. So since we had to do the reverse engineering, like uh, we had to come up with some of the uh, reusable components that were used that what we could salvage from the existing uh, ESB platform and uh, like we had to come up with a new data model for some of the other things. So we are doing the design phase and the third phase was the migration phase. Like this is where we put in uh, the ha all the uh, like work was done where we were able to uh, like using, we were, we were converting all the services from the existing Oracle service bus to uh, RS which is a platform built on uh, WSO to ESB and then uh, we, we did all our uh, unit testing and the uh, code reviews during the migration phase and then after the phase was the acceptance phase where uh, we had to roll out like we have conducted a UAT and then we had to roll out the solution to all the 70, uh, 70 plus consumers we had at that point in time. I just want to acknowledge the great work that some of the engineers in the tech soup in this room and also the engineers of, of uh, Aspire that work together. Um, uh, so some of them are in the room. We have uh, Paco Francia and John Blair and Dan Webb's leadership Thank actually you. helped us uh, through this project along with Aratna's leadership. Thank you. So this is the discovery process. This was the, uh, so as I was saying, another key factor, the second key factor uh, for any migration project to be success is like how we address it, like how we do the groundwork. So this was a one month process we have done, like it was actually four weeks. So we have divided the four weeks into like four different phases. In each of the phases we had set of tasks of, uh, defined. So by doing this, like this helped us uncover like a lot of things about like what the services are. We were able to do our most technical and business functionalities came out of this. So the first week uh, we were doing our interviews with all of the stakeholders, uh, be it IT manager or the end user, we were able to meet everyone in person and uh, we circulated some questionnaires to have them fill out. So we did all those uh, groundwork and then we defined uh, stories and we started drafting stories and those were our requirements uh, going forward. And the second part, like the uh, second week of the uh, process what we have done is like we started to collect the documents that they have. There, it is not that like nobody will have any document, there will be documents. So we started to dig out the documents, uh, we went through all those, we found out some emails, we went about and then uh, we got some emails and then we started <coughs> building our own uh, on top of it. Uh, that was the documentation and then uh, we had a deliverable at the end of fourth week where we were able to review all the documents and then uh, Okay, so this is what we wanted to go further. So discovery phase helped us uh, a great in moving forward. So there is no project without challenges. Even after doing all this, like we have encountered a couple of uh, challenges. So that, that's a different story altogether. So this is what I was about, uh, I was saying, like 
uh, the support for consumers with different technologies. Though it's a SOPA risk, like we had like a uh, varied uh, technology platform, programming languages used, and different applications which were supporting different uh, transportations. So we have to accommodate all those with, uh, within that period. That is one challenge we had. And then uh, we had like many environments, so we had to do the deployments. So to address the deployment challenge, we have brought in uh, CI/CD process, uh, which made us and uh, saved a lot of time in uh, moving a solution from one environment to another and deploying anything as a service. So that saved us a lot of time there. And we also had a lot of uh, custom components which we were able to salvage and reuse. That saved us some time. And uh, the other things we had is like uh, multiple version of the same services. Uh, we had to see like, okay, so <coughs> which are actually used. We had to take an inventory at that point in time and then uh, bring in this usage service agreement in place. And we have to start versioning the services properly so that like it's easier to manage going forward from this point in time. So we wanted to uh, at least take this as a chance to do some little housekeeping here so that it's clean going forward, though it was a uh, little uh, off the thing, off the track before. This is the third key factor. So the third key factor being the right technology use. So we have used uh, RSGen, uh, which is the framework built on top of WSO2 ESB. I'll cover about that in the next slide. And we have used Ap Active, uh, Apache ActiveMQ, SQL Server, and uh, this is a hybrid solution. So we have used uh, Microsoft Azure, and uh, we have used XSLT, and we were using Jenkins for our CI CD process, and we have used Ansible here. Uh, with Ansible, like we were able to write scripts that can uh, move, uh, like imitate and uh, clone an uh, environment into multiple things. We also deal with Azure and we had few instances there. So we don't want to manually go like install the dockets or the containers there. So we have, we have achieved everything using Ansible scripts and we have integrated Ansible with Jenkins here to do it for us. So uh, on the previous slide, I was saying something about RS, right? So uh, what is RS? So for any integration platform to be a successful one, it has to be uh, on uh, ESB and uh, API. So ESB and API are the core, uh, plat core layer for any integration platform to work. So those are uh, the uh, like commercially out of the box uh, solutions. Like they have every features, but it's not like uh, which we can readily use. Uh, we have to put in some effort to uh, make it like tailor to do, for example, there is a mailer component, but it will not send an email on a, we have to define a flow, when to define uh, email and things like that. Uh, with Asperger's uh, like expertise, like uh, we, we have found out like, okay, any project would need a basic plumbing. Plumbing means like audit trial, exception handling, error mechanism, mailer notification. These are something that's been repeated across like all the projects. So why don't we build a uh, free existing uh, framework or a flow on top of the uh, components from the ESB and API manager. So that way the, the end consumer can say about like 20% of their implementation effort with this plumbing. So uh, with that, like uh, we uh, built a framework called RSGen. So that is the framework we have built, which has all the uh, pre, uh, pre-packaged components uh, with the basic plumbing. And uh, okay, now that we have addressed uh, our dev efforts and uh, what, can, what else we can do? And then came this Aorus Omni. Aorus Omni is a retail uh, solution which can have, which adopts like NR of Arts format. NR of Arts is nothing but uh, National Retail Federations, the standard how systems communicate between each other. So we wanted to have uh, a value added uh, services here. So for example, what if a retail solution or a hospitality, like someone opts this solution, they shouldn't be spending too much time any retail will have like sales, sales returns, uh, employee, inventory, pricing and promotion. These are some uh, entities that like going to exist in any industry. So we have uh, like brought in all those uh, known entities or like mostly used entities and we have opted uh, NRF Arts as our uh, base uh, uh, standard. So that way we have built Aorus Somni so that uh, any retail and uh, hospitality can take advantage of uh, the feature like uh, from day one. And we did like little, like any product for that matter has to be customized for the end user. So uh, any customizations go on top, will go as uh, customers 
integration platform. And uh, so, now that like the core layer is like ESB and API, we all we, we need a technology. Okay, now, I know I need a tool, uh, we were wondering like what tool to choose. So, we have gone with the WSO2 and there are reasons like why we choose WSO2. So, we wanted something uh, like uh, open source and we wanted a, a greater support and a lightweight component and uh, with our research like we found out. Uh, WSO2 proved to be a, a successful and efficient COTS with uh, great features. So, we have uh, gone for WSO2 as well. This is the architecture uh, we have in uh, TechSoup. So, the, uh, the base of this is a WSO2 enterprise service bus and RS Gen resides on top of WSO2 enterprise bus and all the back office systems connects to the WSO2 enterprise service bus. And on top is the gateway where the external applications like online shopping, e-commerce and social media, uh, any, any external application for that matter connects to the gateway. And we also have a queue manager and we also have uh, uh, services categorized in uh, like specific to what they were doing. So, this is the framework, this is the uh, architecture like we have followed in uh, TechSoup. And this is the uh, hybrid cloud architecture we have uh, our solution implemented. So, we have a couple of instances running in the data center and we have instance running in the cloud uh, using Azure and uh, we also have a bunch of back office systems that uh, ESB connects to and there are uh, certain uh, cloud applications that are connected to. So, uh, what we have done is like we have made sure uh, all the cloud uh, applications connect to the cloud and in-house applications connect to the uh, uh, in house uh, deployment, uh, that is the suggest, uh, decision we have taken it, uh, which can be leveraged to any customer and their own uh, choice. And uh, once you uh, zoom in, like the ESB, so ESB has uh, ORs in it and the uh, services that are specific to the business. So, when this goes in picture, like the uh, customers can start building their services, they can focus more on their business services than building uh, other plumbing activities like. How, how do I audit, how do I uh, handle exceptions, all those things. So, we have taken all those plumbing activities out of the picture. Uh, one thing about the architecture I did want to mention is that we spent a lot of time thinking this through because not only did we want um, sort of uh, on-site sort of failover and high, high availability, we wanted um, site failover, site failover and, and redundancy and we also as we mentioned in the beginning of the slide, our technical strategy is moving us to SOA. Um, microservices architecture and so having this ability to have instances, mul mul multiple nodes, some in the cloud, some on premise um, provided us uh, with this ability to start to, to begin that transformation to um, as we could begin taking the, the system out of the data center, decoupling them and moving them into the cloud um, and we, we developed that network essentially. So, we extended our private network in, into Azure. So, we have actually now an extended private network in the cloud. And so, that, that comprises now a footprint by which we've now, we can now engineer um, other migration strategies, uh, transformation strategies of, our, of all those different types of uh, platforms that you saw earlier. And uh, having CI CD process as well like helped us a lot. Uh, this is an approach we have carried out in uh, TechSoup and this is something like we practice everywhere. So, uh, we use, uh, when we create a project, we create as a multi Maven projects and uh, we use Maven to do our build process for us. So, all the heavy lifting is done using Maven and we use uh, Jenkins here to manage and we use Ansible scripts to uh, route the uh, uh, deliverables across different environment. So, this is the approach uh, we've been uh, practicing for CI CD. Yeah, so, so essentially the, um, as you can see the benefits that we uh, were able to, we've been able to experience since we um, launched this initiative and this, um, since the project was completed is that our services are consolidated, we have better versioning strategy, um, we have a lot more business agility, um, the potential to have a lot more business agility as we start to begin to transform our other, other platforms. Um, the maintenance of the infrastructure um, is much easier um, right now because of the, uh, 
you know, because it's in open source, um, and we have automation, and the, um, and the services were modernized. So this has basically positioned us. This was sort of a positioning strategy so that as we now, it's sort of like, as the, the middle solution is so critical to, you know, the, this essential foundation of all our, of our um, integrations, it was, it seemed like, it was one of the first candidates for this transformation strategy. And so uh, it, we're pretty much positioned now to begin, as we've, we've been doing, is, is the transformation of those other platforms to newer versions, newer software versions, consolidation, enterprise data model. Thank you.